Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our training videos where we look through various aspects of leadership. Today we're going to be talking about something very specific but very important in relation to leadership and that is networking. Networking is a very fundamental and important part not just only of life but of business or well, not only of business but of life. So before we start, let me ask you a quick question. Do you believe that you have a good network? Do you believe that you have a great network? Or don't you have any network at all? Well, whatever your answer to the question is, you're in the right place to understand and learn some of my strategies, seven of them, which I will share with you about how to create an amazing network. Now, my name is Chris Igwe, and I have 35 years experience of creating, growing and leading teams across five markets which I've worked in and indeed across Europe, Middle East and Africa with other teams that I have had as well. So I hope that if you are looking at various videos that I've done so far, that if you like, if you want to comment, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. It will be great to have your feedback and understand your thoughts on the various subjects such as networking. It is said that building your network helps build your net worth. And for those who don't understand the word or the term net worth, it means your the richness in your life. So it could be your own personal net worth, which is financial, it could be business, it could be relationships. Having a network allows you to build on what you already have and indeed grow even more. So if you think about networking, let's start with a very simple concept. When you move to a new place to live, a new home, a new house, a new apartment, probably the first things you have done or if not you should do, and I give it to you as an idea for the future, you then start to look around and say, well, I need someone in case I have a problem with plumbing, with the electricity, doctors, dentists, car mechanics, whatever it is, you start to build the platform and the profile of all those different sectors of contacts that you will need when there is maybe an emergency or you just need them. Creating a network in business as a leader is a similar sort of thing. You have to think of how you approach that to ensure that you have the right people in the right place at the right time when you need them in your business going forward. So let's start off with one or two. The first one, and it's a very important one, is to build rapport. Building rapport means it's not just about connecting with something, someone, it's about how you're going to engage with them over the lifetime of that relationship that you have and you develop. And building rapport is so forgotten today. We often think, I just wanna meet or talk to X, Y, Z, but you don't start there. You've got to build that relationship over time. You have to be intentional. What do I mean by intentional? Well, when you're building like anything, and I've mentioned this in various videos is Leadership is about a system, a process, and a strategy. Everything you do has to be thought through carefully as to where you want to get to. So you want to be intentional about who it is you want to meet, when, where, how, and why. Because all those things then build up the approach. You send it out to the universe. You desire to be in connection with someone you want to go about doing that, you become intentional, you become like a homing pigeon focused on that person. Very quick example, which has nothing to do with networking, but my wife and I were at an event in the UK and it happened to be something where the Queen Mother, the mother of the current Queen of Britain was attending. We were having our champagne, enjoying ourselves. We didn't know anybody, it was a big event and we were there drinking champagne together. When my wife suddenly said to me, I want to shake the hands of the Queen Mother. There was a sea of people in front and I said to myself, 
and to her, there's just no way you're going to do that. She gave me her glass of champagne, I held it, and off she went. She came back beaming many minutes later, thought she'd been lost in the crowd, came back saying, I shook the Queen Mother's hand. She was absolutely clear as to what she wanted. Her intention was, I am going to shake the Queen Mother's hand and I'm going to do it today. And she went through the sea of people. How she got there, I don't know, but she was intentional. And you need to be about how you focus on building your network. The other important thing is value add. What do I mean by value add? I mean, in any relationship that you create or you develop, what are you providing the other person that is going to enhance their life, make their life better, improve their knowledge, their information, whatever it happens to be. You can't just run around and say, oh, I just want to connect with whoever. What are you offering them that they may not already have or they wish to have, or maybe they don't know they need it and you can offer it. So what is the value that you are adding to their life? Which is linked to this one here, which is never sell. That is one of the biggest mistakes that we make, especially when we're young. I, when I started in this industry, went to trade shows, conferences, very excited about having my business card, and I'd hand my business card out and take other people's cards, until I realized that that was wrong. There was no strategy, there was no focus. I went to countries or trade shows or events where I would never ever meet that individual or those individuals ever again. Our paths were not going to cross because they were in a sector or part of the industry or whatever that had no relevance to me. Never sell. If you sell, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yes, you want the person to buy, but that's very different from selling. I want to be able to buy from you rather than you selling to me. And in today's market and today's world, in fact, whether on social media or direct emails, people are always trying to sell you something, but they haven't proofed the process first. The other day, not too long ago, I had somebody send me an email, a French person, direct email, obviously got my email from somewhere, sent it to me and asked if I would be open to attending English speaking classes. Now, apart from my shock and amazement and surprise and disappointment and everything else, the poor young man had not clearly done his homework, or old man, I don't know, I, I never connected with him. That's the kind of thing which is totally inappropriate and has no value in creating your network. Become a resource. Become a resource. When you become a resource, it means that on the one hand you're avoiding this selling piece but somebody knows through the contact that you have made that you have something which is a value add to them. You are offering something through your skill set, your knowledge, your awareness, your ability, your technical skills, your project skills, your geographical skills, whatever it happens to be, you become a resource to them. You can provide them with information that maybe they don't have. I write articles for the press, I'm interviewed, I attend conferences, I do webinars. My face is out there, people see me. I can be a resource to people. It allows them to contact me in the same way that I can contact them and provide knowledge and information about something they may not have had themselves. Equally important, be patient. As we grow and expand in our industry, and perhaps when you first start, although even now in today's very competitive environment, it's no different. We think, well, we've got to get it done now, right away. If I don't do it now, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will get to that contact or that person. Somebody else will have their business and not me. Well, if you're a leader, you need anyway, as I said before, to be strategic and patient. And if you fulfill some of the other points I mentioned before, then you are going to be there when they need you. Because these relationships are built up over time. They don't go away. When I left 
a company that I was at, my former boss, CEO of Europe, phoned me up. He'd moved on, I'd moved on, phoned me. I was in the back garden in my mum's home, phoned me on my mobile, hadn't spoken to him for about 10 years maybe. He said, Chris, how are you doing? We chatted and um, eventually he said, look, I know that you are one of the most committed and engaged individuals in the industry. Your network is beyond belief. I'm sure that you'll be able to provide me with the contact details of someone that he wanted me to connect with. And we were all in the same company and it so happened that I did, he was right. And he came to the right place. I was able to give him the information. 10 years later, I still had her contact details and I put him in touch. And he said, that's why I like calling you because I know your network is large, wide, and you maintain it, which is this one here. To nurture, to manage, to control, to embrace the network and to help it to grow. But as you help it grow, you also allow others to know they can come to you if they need something. So just as he came to me 10 years later and I was able to offer him this very quick and easy service, put him in touch with somebody else. She and I have been in contact ever since. It's just what makes the world go round. You nurture, you cherish, you take care of your relationships. Now I'm very much involved in the personal development world and I can honestly say that I've had some great mentors, great coaches, the likes of Mark Victor Hansen, who is not only a speaker, trainer, but a prolific author with over 500 million copies of his book, Chicken Soup for the Soul series sold. And I met Mark about 25 years ago in the US and he had me on stage for a brief while. We lost contact, but I reconnected a few months ago. He remembered me, I remembered him, and we've got a conversation going. Bob Proctor, a legend in the industry, a Canadian. Bob is an amazing friend as well, known him a long time, been on stage with him in Vienna and in Los Angeles. He calls me a friend and I'm privileged and honored to have that. You don't have to be in connection all the time. Just once in a while you drop in, but it's all about what you've done before, how you've built the rapport. I was intentional about meeting certain people. I knew that I could add value, which I continue to do today. I never sell. Absolutely taboo to sell. I want people to buy, very different. And I want to be a resource for them. I'm patient and I nurture. So those are the seven key strategies that I believe are very successful. They've helped me today. I have an amazing network. Some people say I've got the best black book or database in my industry, which is retail real estate. That may be, but I'm not holding on to that. It's the fact that I have an incredible number of people who I can call up from CEOs to young professionals and I can connect with them. So these strategies do work but you need to implement them very clearly and consciously. So if this has resonated with you and you've enjoyed hearing these strategies, which I hope you will learn to implement yourself, then please feel free to share, to like, to comment, and of course, subscribe so you know when additional videos are coming forward. Thank you.